A few years ago, one of my favorite YouTubers, JJ McCullough, made a YouTube video looking at several amazing Indian politicians from around the world, highlighting how many members of the Indian diaspora have managed to become prominent world leaders. But since that video is now over 6 years old, and in that time even more politicians of Indian descent have risen to international prominence, I thought it would be interesting to go over some of the same people discussed in the video, as well as several newcomers to the political scene. Specifically looking at the United States, Ireland, the United Kingdom, Singapore, Portugal, Mauritius, Guiana, the Seychelles, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Suriname. All these countries have had prominent leaders of Indian descent, but one important commonality that most of them have had, with the exception of Portugal, is that they've either been colonies or territories of Great Britain. And this is important because the British government were the ones who ended up ruling the majority of the Indian subcontinent when they took over from the British East India Company in the mid-1800s. During this period of British rule, the first wave of Indian migrants in the form of indentured servants left the continent, with great numbers of them being sent to colonies run by the British as well as the French and the Dutch in order to work on the sugar, coffee, and cotton plantations, in order to replace the cheap manual labor that was once done by the African slaves, with many migrants being sent to these colonies just as the slave trade was being banned. With records showing that a majority of these migrants largely came from the north, mainly the province of Uttar Pradesh, which is now the most populous state in India. Due to this, many of those who emigrated largely came from the countryside, with most of them being Hindi-speaking Hindus. Now, traveling to these new lands was often very dangerous, with the indentured workers often spending several weeks or months at sea, and once they got there, they were often paid very little and made to work for several years or decades in very harsh conditions as part of their labor contracts. However, despite these hardships, thousands ended up staying, and today, in many of these countries, the local Indian community has grown to become a significant part, if not the majority, of the population, often mixing with other local European and African peoples to create blended communities unique to these regions of the world. Later on with decolonization and the founding of the independent republics of India and Pakistan in 1947, a second wave of migrants began to arrive in the United States, Canada, and Western Europe starting in the period after the Second World War, with many of these immigrants being distinct from the first wave, as they were often much more regionally diverse, coming from all over India, being moderately wealthier, from more urban backgrounds, as well as being more college educated, with many of them working in more white-collar jobs by being entrepreneurs, scientists, doctors, and more recently, IT professionals. But due to the relative recency of their immigration, they usually tend to make up a much smaller fraction of the population. In the US, the first Indian American to serve in Congress was Dalip Singh Sand, who immigrated to the United States over 100 years ago when India was still a British colony. He eventually settled in California in order to study at UC Berkeley, where he got a master's and a PhD in mathematics. He eventually became a farmer, started a family, gained American citizenship, and then joined the US House of Representatives in 1957 as a Democrat. In the following decades, several other Indian Americans began to enter public office with Kamala Harris becoming the first Indian American and first African American woman Vice President of the United States in 2021 under President Joe Biden. Harris had previously served as a Democratic Senator for California and has a background in law, serving as Attorney General for California and the District Attorney for San Francisco before entering federal politics. She is the daughter of immigrants from two countries. Her Jamaican father, Donald Harris, is a professor of economics at Stanford while her mother, Shamala Gopalan, came to California from India in order to study biology at UC Berkeley. Gopalan was also the daughter of P.V. Gopalan, an Indian civil servant who worked in both India and Zambia, making Kamala Harris at least the second person in her family to be involved with politics. And the current Republican race to find a candidate for the 2024 presidential election. There are currently two Indian Americans in the running. The first is former United States Ambassador to the United Nations and the former Governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley who was born Nimrata Nikki Randawa to Sikh parents who immigrated from the Punjab in northern India, first to Canada, and then to South Carolina where Haley was born. Now there has been some controversy with Nikki Haley allegedly changing her name, but Nikki is her birth middle name and she has gone by that name ever since she was a small child, and she only took the last name Haley when she got married to her husband, Michael Haley, in the 1990s. And the second person in the running is biotech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy who was born in Ohio to Tamil-speaking Hindu parents originally from Kerala in South India. Across the Atlantic and the British Isles, many of the top political positions are held by politicians of Indian origin, including the Taoiseach of Ireland, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the First Minister of Scotland, as well as the Mayor of London, with all four of them also belonging to four different political parties. Leo Varadkar is the current Taoiseach of Ireland, a position equivalent to that of Prime Minister. And along with being the first head of government to come from an ethnic minority background, he is also the first openly gay person to hold that position in Ireland. 
Before entering politics, a member of the center-right Fine Gael party, Varadkar, worked as a medical doctor, and during the recent pandemic, he even briefly returned to medicine as a volunteer to help during the COVID surge. He comes from a medical family, with his older sister Sophia being a neurologist, his Indian father being a doctor, and his Irish mother being a nurse. His parents even first met at a hospital when they were working in England. Due to Britain's long history with India, many people of mixed Indian and British descent have played important roles in British politics ever since the early 1800s. This was the result of many of the first British officials in India largely being men who would have relationships with the local Hindu and Muslim women, often assimilating into the local culture, learning the local language, with some going so far as to even convert to Islam or Hinduism. But the noted historian William Dalrymple, the writer of White Mughals, noting that at the height of this cultural exchange, at least one in three British officials had an Indian wife or mixed children. And several of these Anglo-Indian children would grow up to become important military and political figures in India themselves, such as James Skinner, the son of a Scottish official and a Rajput princess, who would serve as important mercenary and cavalry commander for both the British and the local Maratha Confederacy. After a few generations, the descendants of these mixed marriages eventually made it to Britain, and eventually became involved in the political process, with the most notable cases being David Octorloni Dice Somber, who was the first ever British Asian elected to Parliament in 1841, as well as Robert Jenkinson, the second Earl of Liverpool, who became Prime Minister in 1812, whose great-grandmother is believed to have been a local Indian woman. 200 years later in 2022, the British government had a pretty turbulent year, where over the course of just a few months, the Conservative Party went through three different leaders. They eventually settled on Rishi Sunak, who also became Prime Minister in late October. Sunak becoming Prime Minister was a historic first for the position, as he is the first ever British Asian, and as a Hindu, the first ever non-Christian to hold the office, with Sunak's parents being part of the Indian diaspora community in British East Africa, in what is modern day Kenya and Tanzania. Both of them eventually moved to the United Kingdom, where Sunak and his siblings were born and raised. Sunak is also notable for being the richest person to ever become Prime Minister, with his net worth sitting at around $800 million, making him more than twice as rich as King Charles, with much of that wealth coming from his wife's family, as she is the daughter of Indian tech entrepreneur Narendra Murthy, who founded the company Imposis and is said to be worth at least $4 billion. Hamza Yusuf became the First Minister of Scotland in 2023 as a member of the Scottish National Party, with the role of First Minister first being established along with the Scottish Parliament in the year 1999. Yusuf first entered politics by working as an assistant to Bashir Ahmed, and a few years later, in 2011, at just 26 years old, he was elected to the Scottish Parliament. Like Zunak, Yusuf made history by being the first Scottish Asian and non-Christian to hold the office, with Yusuf coming from a Muslim background. His parents were also immigrants, with his father coming to Scotland from the Punjab region of Pakistan, while his mother was born and raised in the Indian Muslim community in Kenya. As he represents a part of Glasgow, in the historic football rivalry between the local Celtic and Rangers football clubs, Yusuf is a Celtics fan. Interestingly, Anas Sawar, the leader of the Scottish Labour Party, the second largest party in the country, also comes from a Pakistani Muslim background, with his father, Mohammed Sawar, notably being the first Muslim to be elected to Parliament back in 1997. Mohammed Sawar eventually left British politics in 2010, and returned to his birth country of Pakistan, where he was made the governor of the province of the Punjab, and for a short time, he was even part of the Pakistani Senate, giving him the rare distinction of having served as a politician in two different countries. Sadiq Khan was elected as the third mayor of London in 2016, as a member of the Labour Party, with London only beginning to elect mayors in the year 2000. Khan is also the first Muslim mayor of London. Before becoming mayor, he worked as a lawyer and served in the House of Commons for over 10 years, from 2005 to 2016, with both of his parents being immigrants from Pakistan. Indians have had a long presence in Southeast Asia, often working as merchants since ancient times, but modern immigration from India to Singapore increased during the 1800s when they were both part of the British Empire. And as noted in JJ's video, Indian Singaporeans have had a long presence in politics, despite being a small fraction of the population, with five presidents of Singapore coming from an Indian background, including the current president, Tharman Shanmu Gunaratnam. He first entered the Singaporean parliament in 2001, later serving in several high offices, such as being deputy prime minister, before being elected president in late 2023. Nowadays, we most often think of the British or the Spanish as having the largest colonial empires, but for a short time, Portugal was also a worldwide colonial power, with them having control over modern-day Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, as well as Goa on the west coast of India, which was controlled by Portugal from the 1500s until the 1960s, when the Republic of India annexed the territory. As a result of this colonial history, 
there exists a small Indian Portuguese community, with two members of the community going on to become Prime Minister of Portugal itself. Nobre da Costa was Prime Minister for a short time in 1978, and Antonio Costa, no relation, is the current Prime Minister of Portugal today. His father, Orlando da Costa, being a prominent Portuguese writer, who was born in Mozambique and grew up in Goa while there were still Portuguese possessions. Mauritius is an island nation off the coast of Madagascar, and is pretty unique as a large part of the country's population, up to 70%, is descended from Indian indentured workers, brought over during the period of British colonial rule. The local currency is even known as the Mauritian rupee, and the rest of the population is composed of people of African descent, Europeans, mainly French and British, as well as some Chinese Mauritians. The current Prime Minister is Pravin Jagnath, and ever since independence in 1968, almost every Prime Minister of Mauritius, except for one, has come from the Indian community, and they all belong to just two political families. The Jagnaths and the Ramgulans. With both families competing for the Prime Ministership so often, that in the first 50 years since independence, only four people have ever held the position of Prime Minister, making the last Prime Minister, Sir Anirudh Jagnath, both the second and seventh person to become Prime Minister, before he eventually passed on the position to the current Prime Minister, who is his son. Paul Berenger, the only politician who became Prime Minister from outside these two political families, is also notable because while Mauritius was a British colony for a long time, they had taken the island from the French in the 1800s, and Berenger is a descendant of some of the first French settlers who arrived on the island almost 300 years ago. This also gives him the distinction of being the only Christian to have become Prime Minister, since the two main political families are Hindu. Just north of Mauritius, there's another island nation known as the Seychelles, led by President Wavell Ramkalawan. Before entering politics, Ramkalawan served as a priest in the Anglican Church, and rose to prominence through his sermons that criticized the dictatorial rule of the one-party government. This is because after the Seychelles first gained independence from Britain in 1976, the Seychelles People's United Party took over the government by staging a coup with backing from the Soviet Union, leading the country to become a one-party state until the 1990s. After increased protests, other political parties were eventually allowed for both the presidential and national assembly elections, with Ram Kalawan being elected to the national assembly in 1993. He would go on to run in every single presidential election since 1998, before eventually winning in 2020, becoming the first member of an opposition party to hold the office of president since 1976. And while serving as president, Ram Kalawan continues to serve as a minister in the Anglican Church. Dr. Muhammad Ifram Ali was elected president of the South American nation of Guyana in 2020. The 2020 Guyanese election was highly contested, with the previous president, David A. Granger, repeatedly claiming to have won and refusing it to concede. However, after several recounts and court cases that went all the way to the Supreme Court of Guyana, it was concluded that Ali had won, and he was eventually sworn in as president a few months later. This caused some communal tensions, with Granger's political party largely being supported by Guyanese of African descent, while Ali's People's Progress Party is largely supported by Guyanese of Indian descent. With the PPP originally being founded by Chetty Jagan, his American wife Janet, and Forbes Burnham, all three of whom would go on to become president of Guyana. However, Burnham would later split with the party, going on to found the rival PNCR party. The presidency of Guyana is also surprisingly diverse, with the first president, Arthur Chung, being of Chinese descent, the second president, Forbes Burnham, being of African descent, the fourth, Chetty Jagan, being of Indian descent, the sixth, Janet Jagan, being the first female Jewish president, and the current president, Irfan Ali, being the first Muslim. Dr. Ali has a doctorate in urban and regional planning. Before entering politics, he worked for the Caribbean Development Bank, and he is currently the only Muslim leader of a country in the Americas. In the neighboring country of Trinidad and Tobago, Christine Kangaloo was recently elected president in March of 2023, succeeding Paula May Weeks, making Trinidad and Tobago one of the few countries in the world to have a female head of state succeed another female head of state. Before entering politics, Kangaloo worked as a lawyer. Her family has a strong background in law and public service, with her father also being a lawyer who served as the mayor of San Fernando, the most populous city in Trinidad and Tobago in the late 1970s, with two of her brothers also working as judges. She is also one of two Indian world leaders to be a practicing Christian, with President Kangaloo being a member of the local Presbyterian church. Suriname is somewhat of an outlier, as while it was controlled by the British for a few years in the 1600s, it ended up being ruled by the Dutch for over 300 years, until the year 1975 when the country gained independence from the Netherlands. And during this period of Dutch rule, they began to import Indian indentured workers through a deal with the British, as well as Indonesians from their colonies in the Dutch East Indies, which is now modern-day Indonesia. 
This led there to be a sizable population of people of both Indian and Indonesian descent in Suriname to this day, as well as a sizable African population descended from the freed slaves. Current president is Chan Santoki, and he comes from a Hindu family. He is a member of the Progressive Reform Party of Suriname, which was originally founded as the United Hindustani Party in order to promote the interests of the local Indian community, but over the years its space has expanded to include a more diverse range of the public. Now, with all these Indian politicians rising up to take prominent positions in governments outside India, there have also been several immigrants to India who have risen to become powerful political figures, the most notable of which would be Sonia Gandhi, who is considered to be one of the most powerful politicians in the country, having led the Indian National Congress Party for over 20 years between the years 1998 and 2022. With the INC being one of the most important organizations that called for independence from Britain, after independence they end up leading the country for over 50 years since 1947. However, despite her last name, Sonia is not related to independence leader and former president of the INC, Mahatma Gandhi, nor is she herself from India. She is Italian, and was originally born Sonia Maino to a Catholic family in the northern town of Luciana in northern Italy during the 1940s. The reason she ended up in India and became involved with politics is because she met and married a young Indian student while working in England, named Rajiv Gandhi. And Rajiv turned out to be the son of Indira Gandhi, and the grandson of Nehru, two of the most important prime ministers of India. However, after getting married, the couple would largely avoid politics. But after Rajiv's brother, Sanjay, died in a plane crash, he reluctantly became more and more involved in politics. A few years later, after his mother was assassinated, Rajiv took over the role as Prime Minister. However, a few years after he stepped down as Prime Minister, he was also assassinated. This led Sonia to eventually enter politics when she became the leader of the INC in 1998. And during this time, her son, Rahul Gandhi, also entered Parliament making him at least the fifth generation of the Gandhi Nehru family to be involved with politics. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you next time. And thanks to my patrons, Ontroid and DC, who's the first person to join the Prime Minister level for my Patreon.